Happy hot news, everybody. It's your Wednesday. Let's get into the tech news, including the fact that AMD still doesn't seem satisfied with what they put out because Zen 4 and RDNA 3 are just going to be amazing. Apple released their silicon for the first time, and Elgato is trying to get you to pay to learn from them. Let's talk about that after we talk about today's video sponsor, Synergy, which is the app that everybody should have if you're trying to manage more than one computer in the same geographical region, because it allows you to connect multiple devices with one keyboard and mouse and allow you to control them just right here. I can control the computer I'm working on over there, and I can also control the computer I'm working on back there just using Synergy. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, and allows you to do things like copy and paste, or just mess around and click a few buttons here and there, like run a benchmark on a graphics card I'm trying to benchmark across the room. It's amazing. Check out Synergy at the link in the video description. And if Synergy Basic isn't enough for you, they have a pro edition, which includes SSL encryption for all of your security needs. So check out Synergy at the link in the video description. And now let's check out AMD's promise about Zen 4, because they're not done, okay? The Ryzen 5000 series, even though it absolutely slaps Intel in the face, even though it takes the IPC crown, even though it's roughly a 20% performance improvement year on year. Well, according to an interview with AMD, they're saying that, that they're going to do that again. Zen 4 architecture should produce a similar long list of improvements as Zen 3. They're going to try to squeeze everything out of it and get that done. Now, they didn't mention whether or not they'd been increasing core counts, and they didn't mention whether or not they would be getting that from IPC, but a 20% improvement, again, seems to be what they're doing. However, just so you know, it does look like Zen 4 is slated for 2022 and likely not a launch in this upcoming year. We're probably going to hear rumblings about it towards the end of 2021, but let's give AMD a break, give them like 15 months to regroup and come out with Zen 4 with how audacious and bodacious Zen 3 has been. Is that the word I was looking to use? It's the word I use regardless. But that's not the only thing that was said in the interview because they are also promising more improvements when it comes to RDNA 3. Now, we can't necessarily verify this because the RX 6000 series hasn't come out for review just yet. But Rick Bergman from AMD is saying that they're going to do it again, okay? They're really going to try to get another massive performance per watt increase on RDNA 3 over RDNA 2. And they're claiming that RDNA 2 is a 50% improvement over the original one so they're just gonna keep stacking all of the improvements and get it done they're gonna just blow us out of the water which is good obviously for consumers because of competition we need that but amd just marching forward looks like the leadership of lisa sue is gonna bring them to new heights and they're gonna leave other companies in the dust if they're not gonna watch themselves properly which let's go ahead and talk about watching things properly because there's been a notebook that's popped up the ryzen 5000 u series the acer aspire 5 a 515 with the Ryzen 5000. That's amazing. Anyways, it popped up on Amazon where it has a 5700U. I would I, I would love to check this out, but it has Zen 2. That's the only, that's the big boo for me with Ryzen 5000 series. Now let's talk about the competition. Obviously, AMD gearing up for Zen 4 to be a massive improvement. Intel, on the other hand, says, hey, we produced all we could. So now just try to cool it better to get more performance out of it with them launching thermoelectric coolers with EK and Cooler Master. This is in partnership with Intel's cryo cooling technology. You can see here that EK releasing a water block that you can use with a thermoelectric cooler. And then it uses Peltier cooling to actually make it so that you can run at five 5.6 to 5.8 gigahertz with a 10900K, presuming you have a chip that can actually do that. And the EK thing's gonna cost roughly $300. Cooler Master announcing a 360 mil rad called the ML360 Sub Zero. In fact, Linus checked this out in his Hold video on, on it right here. Uh, and it kept everything nice and cool, but a, a, Intel's just saying that, listen, we've given up. I'm trying to make our product better. So now we need to make other products better surrounding our product in order to get anything out of what we can produce, which is, I love the idea of thermoelectric cooling. I love the fact that they're coming out with it. Don't stop doing that. Don't stop innovating in other areas. But this seems like a desperate attempt at them trying to hold on to relevancy. And it seems oddly coincidental that they launched this on the day that a company was going to be removing their products from their product lineup. Apple announcing their first Apple Silicon chips yesterday, the M1 processor, which are going to power the next gen Macs. They announced a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and 
and a Mac Mini with the M1 chips. It's going to be on five nanometers, 16 billion transistors, up to an eight core GPU, eight core CPU, and a 16 core neural engine with 11 tops, which this is really good. They're saying it has industry leading performance per watt. The benchmarks that they showed were oddly unspecific, but they did say that it basically destroys their current MacBooks with Intel chips, but we don't have a whole lot of like concrete numbers to go on. It was just like unambiguous slides that didn't tell you a whole lot. The thing that they did tell us a whole lot was about battery life with the M1 chip being able to produce nearly 20 hours of battery life on the MacBook Pro with video playback, 18 hours of wireless web browsing, which is insane. You can see here the MacBook Pro is going to have that M1 chip, 16 gigs of memory, two terabyte SSD up to those and then up to 20 hours of battery life, which is just it's insane. But with that, there's some caveats around things. The entire ecosystem that's been built around Max is going to start to crumble with the first announcement that they won't work with external GPUs. That's not going to happen. But we did get a better webcam out of them. So Apple's winning. Now let's switch over to a company that I'm going to keep my eye on in like terms of user unfriendliness, kind of like we are with Apple. Corsair and Elgato are doing some weird things in the streaming industry. They acquired Gamer Sensei, which is a company that allows you to match with professionals who teach you how to be better at games, which I guess kind of makes sense. But then yesterday they announced their new pipeline, their Elgato Partners pipeline to kickstart streamers career, which seems intriguing. But when you look into it, I'm just I'm a little I'm a little concerned here. So the pipeline idea is that they're going to teach you how to be a better streamer and then they're going to have a streamer starter kit to make all of that like feasible for you. And then in the beginning of next year, they're going to be launching a scholarship program where they might subsidize streamers. But here's the thing. The streamer starter kit starts at $550, which is insane. Mind you, you don't need to pay that, which includes an Elgato Wave 1, a Stream Deck Mini, a Ring Light, and 12 months all access pipeline membership. The pipeline membership by itself is $300, which is odd they're going to start the streamer scholarship program in january 2021 but i'm just i'm really confused about this because the one year all access pass to the leading training and mentorship platform for aspiring live streamers curse work video tutorials podcasts master classes live mentorship community and more 300 dollars, my friends the ring lights 200 dollars by itself i think the wave one's 150 the stream deck mini is also roughly in that 150 dollar price ballpark so like you are saving two hundred dollars but why like the that the, the pipeline thing just has me really concerned you're paying them three hundred dollars a year to become a better streamer maybe it's worth it we'll see if it plays out I don't like that move. I do like the move of Spotify acquiring a new company that allows you to insert ads into podcasts. I like this because it means that there's more monetization opportunities for creators out there. It's going to use Megaphone's technology to insert ads into podcasts so that you can get more ad revenue out of it. And then let's talk about another big deal. Virgin Galactic announcing its space flight from Spaceport America will be taking place sometime next week, as well as Virgin Hyperloop having the world's first crewed Hyperloop trip with two people on it went successfully they didn't die or explode which is what you want to see out of these types of things then spacex is getting confirmation from the canadian government that they'll be able to offer starlink satellite internet to canadians sometime soon hopefully that gets approved in the near future with starlink beta initially launching two americans who are in the north part of america as well as southern canada is the general idea of where they're going to have that initial launch speaking of initial launch the ps5's initial launch could have been much larger according to the senior art director from Sony saying in the beginning when I started drawing it was much larger even though I didn't know what engineering was going to do and they had to talk him out of it and now he's saying that it's the perfect size because if it was thinner then the airflow wouldn't have worked as well so uh, we could have had a bigger PS5 it's huge by the way I don't know if maybe go to your local Best Buy and see if they have one on display it's a massive chunky boy then you go to the Series X that's on display and it's a little Thing. They clearly went with different visions for these. Let's keep talking about the PS5 for a second. It's supposed to launch tomorrow with Sony coming out and saying that all the things you kind of thought you were getting out of the PS5, eh, they'll be available after launch, such as 8K gaming support, next gen hard drive game storage, and other things that they like storing to USB. They're going to be updating 
doing it later on. It's not going to happen right now. You can't use 8K signals from your PS5, which sucks for somebody like me who got a free 8K TV from LG, which you can check out our video on the LG Nano 75, 75 Nano 99, I think it was called. I like my 8K TV. Obviously, the PS5 is not going to be able to drive 8K games, but you know what? I got an 8K TV. I need to be able to use it properly. Then let's talk about the Spider-Man remaster that's going to be coming out. Insomniac Games announcing that they should have the ability for you to transfer your saves sometime around an update in Thanksgiving. Then the Series X for a moment. For a lot of people who got their hands on it yesterday, there was a SSD that was discovered in there, which just looks like a typical M.2 SSD, as you can see here, which looks like a PCI Express 3.0. So the people were curious about how you're getting the speeds turns out western digital designed a custom asic for it that allows it to do pci express 3.0 by 4 support as well as pci express 4.0 by 2 support and it, it it does both but i i can't continue doing both existing and not existing so i'm going to not exist for you any longer because this episode of hot news is over don't forget to check out today's video sponsor in the video description synergy the app that allows you to control multiple devices using one singular keyboard and mouse check the link in the video description to check them out Check all of it and ch 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 